So, for my presentation, I found this wonderful article talking about two species of Sacaglossian sea slugs. Vice jumped on this opportunity about those specific slugs. Why slugs, you might ask? Well, these slugs aren't any ordinary slugs. These slugs, Molusca and Astropoda, can shed off their body parts and subsequently grow them back, even the heart. This is known as autonomy, which is common among anthropods, amphibians, and lizards. Now, this is surprising. So with Vice's take on this wild experiment, they spoke about how the slugs amputated themselves and the possible explanations for doing so. Usually in autonomy, animals are usually able to do so very quickly, but in the case of these slugs, they take hours to amputate their own bodies. Along with this, the sea slugs don't have many predators, so it's not really necessary. But in this instance, observing the, sea, the slug's ability to regrow their entire body is one of the first extreme cases of autonomy observed. In cases where autonomy is evolved, the organisms usually do not have hearts, which makes these sea slugs an interesting topic of conversation. Weiss also explained how even the heart and several important organs were still encased within the autonomized bodies of the slugs. The article also explained the significance of the age of the slugs that underwent this process. Those that were younger, less than one years old, were able to continue eating algae within the hours of the event, and one to three weeks later were able to regenerate their bodies to resume normal functions. Within this time span, they also grew back all of their vital organs. Vice illuminated that the older slugs, which were 480 to 520 days before the autonomy event, were not able to recover from the event and subsequently died within 10 days. And to go deeper into what happened to the other older slugs, they weren't able to feed again or regain any lost limbs. Vice explained that what gives these slugs the ability to regrow their entire body is by eating algae, but that isn't the end of it. The slugs' bodies were able to hijack the chloroplasts from the algae they consumed and utilize it for their own benefit. Through this process, the slugs are then able to reproduce or to produce their own oxygen and energy for the head when the rest of the body is lost. Now for the real experiment. Five of the laboratory bred Elysia marginata, which are the sea slugs, and one individual of, the, of a field collected Elysia marginata, were autonomized at the neck position. All the organs, including the heart, were left in the shed body. Immediately after the autonomy, all the slugs' heads moved on their own. The wound from where the separation occurred healed within a day for all of the slugs. The young individuals began eating within a few hours of the event, and the regeneration of the heart was completed after seven days, and the whole body was completed within around 20 days. Vice was correct in stating that the older slugs died within 10 days of the event, as confirmed by the primary article. As the older slugs were dying, their bodies slowly became pale, which is due to their hijacked chloroplasts dying off. This, in turn, decreased the amount of oxygen and energy available for the organism, resulting in death. Vice explained that slugs achieve autonomy not to evade predators, because they would die due to being so slow at det detaching from their main body, but because they evade parasites and infections more, much more often than external predators. The scientific article goes into detail about this process. The reason why slugs do not have many natural predators, which Vaish did not mention, is because of their cryptic coloration and toxic chemicals within their body from the food that they eat. They collected 82 individuals of Elysia from the field and likewise all contained the parasite Copepod Arthur arthurius, and three of them autonomized at their neck position. The shed bodies were then analyzed to see if they contained the parasite, which they did. Another 39 individuals lost their bodies over time due to autolysis, which means that these slugs may have released enzymes in the body where the parasite was located, causing a dissolution or self-digestion of its own body. Among those 39 slugs, 13 of them regenerated the lost body part while the others had died. These species of Sacaglossian slugs have a grove at their neck, which is called the breakage plane. At this location is where the fine nylon string is attached to induce autonomy. They also simulated a predator attack using pincers at the same neck location, but that te technique did not induce autonomy. So, Full body autonomy is a possible because of these slugs' ability to hijack the consumed chloroplasts from algae. 
This process is known as kleptoplasty. In Alicia slugs, there's a large digestive gland branched throughout the surface of its body, including the head. This gland also contains cells that can maintain ingested chloroplasts, allowing the slug to then photosynthesize and generate its own nutrients. These hijacked chloroplasts are then called kleptoplasts, and they could be sustained for many months. This gives the slug a large advantage when it can no longer eat or digest its own food in cases where its body is removed. The, this primary article concluded that the sea slug's ability to autonomize evolved from the necessity of escaping parasites. The parasite that infected these selected slugs usually occupies most of the body and strongly inhibits its host to, host's ability to reproduce. They also stated that it may also be attributed to the slug removing toxic chemicals that may have built up over time or to remove itself if tangled or trapped in algae. This video was made in the context of Bio 282 Conceptual Approach for Biology Majors 2, Arizona State University, Spring Semester of 2021. Thank you so much for listening.